So in the first part, I have been talking about the motivation. Why would you even consider going even driven? In the second part, I showed you the code, what it looks like, even for a simple example, uh, a lot of boilerplate code, certain new layers, new building blocks, and so on. The third part, I talked about uh, the ways of testing and why I think it's a huge benefit of doing doing this this way. So if you also if you're practicing TDD, uh, then I think it's super beneficial. Now it's com it's part it's a moment to also consider how it will look like with uh, adding new features. We can imagine just by talking about it, and then some conclusions whether it all makes sense and what's the what are the heuristics and and when is a good idea. So let's imagine we have a new feature to implement and we want to see also new all workshops additions. And um, I've been mentioning that in the in the second part already. Mm, so far we have code base for uh, adding registering participants, uh, giving them assigning name, assigning email. Now we want to think about additions and for my needs because I'm the client of this software, potential software, so from my point of view I want to see a kind of a dashboard where I see all the additions and uh, I want to see participants too. Maybe I won't go enter the addition or maybe it's all inlined. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so a typical approach with a, from a Rails perspective would be just to have, you know, addition that create and that basically it, it creates some kind of data. We can imagine, uh, you know, uh, submitting the, the data about the workshop being done by a web form when we have a name of the edition, we have the city, we have the date, starting date. And that's it. But actually, it's a bit more complicated because we have three different use cases here. We want, we may want to plan an edition of a workshop, which, for example, today uh, we are we are still in the prepare preparation phase of uh, the edition in London in November. And I would like to provide that. Uh, but that's that's a different use case from reporting on old editions. So last month we had a workshop edition in Berlin. Uh, there was a really nice workshop, and but it already happened. Uh, on the view, maybe I want to have it separated, the past ones, the new ones. Also, there, there is another type. Uh, we have company editions of the workshop. So the, the, those are the internal ones where we, when we are invited to the companies. And actually, I told you about the, the change the way of thinking from the structure. Like you can, you can imagine, for example, a type field. Maybe you can imagine a, a Boolean flag that is old is a Boolean flag in the active record, or maybe is company edition is a Boolean flag. So you can implement it this way. But I told you about changing the thinking about from model, about modeling events uh, from thinking about the structure to thinking about the behavior. So what exactly happens when we, for example, plan an edition of a workshop? So in our case, for example, we when we know the month and the location, we may want to, and for example, let's say we one action to do, and this can be manual, is to request the pricing strategy. So we should pro provide the pricing strategy somewhere. And then probably want to generate the landing page. And we have some tools for landing pages, so it could be automated to the point that we plan a new workshop edition, automatically generates a landing page. But if we report an alt edition, doesn't make sense to generate the landing page like backwards. We, the landing page is for the sales purposes. Um, we don't want to sales back in time to sell back in time. But you know, if someone pays, wants to pay, that would be great. Um, but also, a different use case is for planning a company edition for a workshop. Again, we are not probably generating the um, the landing page, but. Uh, because th there's no point in generating a landing page for a company edition. Maybe we are more focused on uh, preparing or generating the offer. Uh, so a targeted offer to this company who uh, somehow made an interest of having this workshop in their part. Maybe they have a big race project. Maybe they consider bringing us to their uh, team and for two days show them some event-driven approaches. So different use cases are happening. So in my case, I really want to have different commands for that, all those cases. And I want to have three different events happening so that I can react or not re or not react in those places accordingly. And I think that's super, super valuable that I can make this distinction much easier. So in the end, with this approach, it's more about what I call the event algebra. Um, we can look at those events as a business process and we can combine, okay, planning a new edition of a workshop, handle this by generating a, a new... Uh, uh, a landing page. Maybe this handler generating a landing page is actually in the sales uh, bounded context, which is okay. Events can be handled by uh, you know, areas in other places. So actually an event like a workshop edition plant can be then like can be a source for a command called generate landing page. 
right? And then generate the landing page can change some state in our you know system that the landing page is already generated, but also can trigger some can trigger some third party API to actually generate the the landing page, right? Uh, so this is how it goes. This is how we can operate on the business process level, and you, you can like almost like. Um, mm, plug in the functionalities. You can drag and drop, almost like a drag and drop. Obviously, it's all in the code, but you can imagine using the events, many things can react to many things, and we can build those processes. So it's much easier to, once you know the business process, it's much easier It's much easier to, to build it this way. Uh, so that's how I would approach adding new features to this kind of event-driven uh, Rails application, which was started from scratch. And at the beginning, you can see a lot of boilerplate code, but later on, I can envision some good uh, benefits from this approach. So as a summary now, uh, when would I go with even driven from scratch? I would say I would consider going there if the business process is more or less stable, which is our case from RKC. Like the workshops, the strategy around workshops will definitely change over time. But the overall rule of selling the workshop editions and the way uh, organizing the workshops is probably staying more or less the same. So the main flow of the business process, how the money flows through the system, uh, probably stays the same, which means this is the crucial architecture. So what I call the architecture, usually it's about the domain architecture, so how are the events organized, but also the business architecture, so how is the money flowing in. Uh, we should be able to identify crucial points in the business by events, whether it's by the business people, like in, my, in this case, I'm both the business person and a programmer, I can do it. Like we were able, as with the RKC team, we, can, we were able to identify a lot of the moments on, in time and to think about how they matter. We are also programmers and it's important that, you know, if you want to go even driven, you should be able to express the events in the code and it should be those events. And that's, a, that's also the second next point. Developer understand the business process very well. Um, I've often seen like the event-driven approaches in, in some applications where the developers were quite skilled in the event-driven appro driven approach, but they were not able to express the business process for many reasons. Maybe they, they lack the understanding. But then you could see those events with names which are really artificial. Really, they don't really exist in the business. They are just existing because we are even driven. So it's more like for technical purposes than from the business perspective. Maybe similar kind of event exists in the business, but no one really uses that in the business language. And the even driven approach, I think, makes sense when it's connected to the business. It doesn't, for me at least, it doesn't bring that much value if it's just, you know, for technical purposes. Uh, the programmer does understands that not all has to be automated. Some event handlers can be manual. So that's, I can see that as a, also responsibility of a developer, but you can say it's a responsibility of the product owner. Mm, you could... You can see that right now we have a business process without any automation at all, almost, and it works. So it's not that we want to now replace all of that. We just want to identify those places, those events, where, which we want to have automated because we see some real value from, from automating this. Maybe we will earn more money, maybe we will save on time of our programmers. Whatever is the reason, we will take it one by one whether it makes sense or not. Maybe at the end, after a few years, we will have the whole system automated, but for now it's easy to plug in into certain places. It's much easier, I think, than with starting with a CRUD because with a CRUD approach, it's more like you, you need to build a certain area in order to do anything with that. And here we just can introduce the data with the events. And the last point is understanding domain versus understanding business, which is, I think, a crucial difference. Uh, you can understand a domain, an area of some kind of industry, for example. You can see how it works more or less uh, when it comes to the, the details, the technical details, how the things are done. But it's also an important part, especially for us, for developers, but even more important for the business people and non-technical people, that we need to understand how the money is made. We, because that's the background, that's the foundation for making our decisions in the code. Uh, the whole business process, you know, the, of making the money should be exp should be clearly seen uh, in the code somewhere as, as a flow of events. This is like where people pay, this is where we pay provision, this is where we have some costs. There should be one part of the code which is clearly seen and understanding the domain is sometimes not enough. Or vice versa, uh, we, you, can often, you can often meet clients who seem to be really good business people. They seem to have the skill of finding, you know, how to make money but they don't necessarily are not necessarily their domain uh, experts. So it might be actually more up to you to find to, to find this, the, a good source of the domain knowledge. 
um, and then try not to confuse the business knowledge with the domain knowledge. Business is about making, you know, preparing a structure for making money continuously, and domain is about how exactly things are working in this industry, right? Uh, so what next? If this topic became interesting to you from a Ruby perspective, for example, you can get clone race even store starter kit. Uh, that's a starter kit I built for the purpose of this session, actually. It's still at the beginning, but it was mostly so that we can do this kind of even driven approaches from scratch much quicker because we, in the starter kit you, you would see uh, the uh, event store configured, command bus configured, aggregate route configured. So all of this basic body print is already there. So at least you don't have to type it again, right? So that's one part. And also as part of the starter kit bring, comes the bounded context gem, which is just a generator. And you can easily generate the bounded context, again, just the boilerplate code. It's very simple, just create the directories for you, and then you can have a starting point. So uh, for you, it might be a good next point to, to start experimenting with this. For us, as the, the tooling providers here, but also we invite you to, to contribute. For the tooling providers, we uh, I see the goal to make it more friendly to people to, to, to start with event driven from scratch. Because I see many cases where starting event driven from scratch using Rails would be great. And I want to optimize more on that. So far in the past, uh, Rails event store tooling was more focused on the legacy Rails applications. So if you have a big applications, Rails event store is super optimized for that. You can just plug it into it, publish events, react to the, to the events, they will be stored automatically. That's, I think, optimized perfectly well for that. Uh, but for doing starting from scratch, we are now focusing on this. It's already, as you see already, there is some tooling. We will get better over time. And my goal is to write this 15-minute programming, 15-minute uh, blog posts application that actually managed to do it in an even driven way in 15 minutes because with the help of the code generation, obviously. I think that's what, what, was, what made Rails really popular was the code generation, even though I don't advise to use it too often. But at the beginning, you have to admit all, we all used code generation in Rails. It was helpful. If you want to read some more theory about uh, those approaches, RailsEventStore.org is the, our tooling. There is this domain-driven design, the whole Bible by Eric Evans. It's, a, it's with Java code examples. It's very generic, uh, a big book, a big book to read. Domain driven distilled is more about architecture, so there's more diagrams, no code. Uh, implement, so this is more like understand the bounded context, maybe some aggregates, but just as a concept, not, not as a code. Implementing DDD is very code oriented, but at the same time, it's uh, Java. Uh, so, you know, from the Ruby perspective, it might be a bit uh, not friendly, but it's a really good book. Many of the concepts are shown in this book. And the last one, Domain Driven Rails, is the book that we wrote. Uh, this is the landing page, uh, blogrc.com domain driven rails. Mm, and we, we describe what, when you would like to maybe consider buying this book. For example, the big classes, service objects dealing with too many responsibilities, critical business logic invalidation. So all the kind of stuff that we usually see, like the business processes are hard to see. This is what we usually see in our race applications. And the book was written by Robert Pankovetsky, one of our uh, RKC programmers who was experienced with many legacy applications and we all saw the same patterns and this book uh, tries to help you uh, you splitting this existing legacy application into more manageable units, um, decoupling this, connecting those parts uh, and trying to have it maintained for a longer time. There are many different versions of that. Uh, you can buy just the book, you can buy uh, the book and currently we have a discount so maybe you can want to consider this. Uh, you want to have uh, a book and exercises and code, for example. So that's good for practicing this. And also uh, those exercises are the ones that we do during the workshop. Also, there's a community access. We have a Slack community. Uh, there's about, I don't know, 120 people now. And uh, it's a really nice place where people ask questions related to event-driven approaches combined with Rails and combined with Ruby. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. Uh, thanks for watching this uh, video series. I, I hope you liked it. I'm considering more uh, more sessions like that, maybe more webinars. Uh, so if you liked it, please uh, leave a comment. What would you like to see next or what other questions may you may want to uh, have right now? And also remember we have the workshop editions. Uh, right now the next one is for London. Probably the next one will be in Amster Amsterdam. But also if your company is interested in having uh, such a workshop internally in your company, which might be easier and more convenient for you, we are able to come to you and help you uh, on-site. And again, thanks for watching.